Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we are back for the 2021 prediction game for the men's NCAA championships. We've got Swim Swim writers and swimming aficionados, Carl Ortegon and Robert Gibbs, back with us to give us their insight and predictions event by event for the 2021 men's NCAAs. Guys, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, day one, event one, men's 800 free relay. What are you thinking? Uh, Carl, let's start with you. Um, I think this one's all Texas. This is where they're like way ahead of the rest of the field. Um, the Texas like mid distance group is always ridiculous. And I think with Kibler being their hammer, Kibler being their hammer leg, and they still have probably three 131s, 132s. I don't think anyone's touching them. Yeah, um, it's that. Texas all the way. I actually think Cal may get a lot closer than uh, we may give them credit for. They looked really sharp at Pac-12. They got some guys who can throw down. Uh, Trenton Julian was already 131 at Pac-12 on a split, and they should be faster. So I think they may give Texas a bit of a run for their money, but it should be Texas winning this thing. Yeah, I see. Looking at times and thinking about teams, I see Cal in Florida, who are three and four seeds, kind of moving up and maybe giving some chase, but um, Texas is (laughs) – first seed by over four seconds that this is their bread and butter there's yeah i don't see them losing that one uh on to day two easy enough um let's start with the 200 free relay florida first seed texas second cal third i mean this one's kind of up in the air what do you what do you guys see for this robert go ahead (laughs) (laughs) so just to be a lot of really close relay races. And I was just looking at these before now, and I don't have great answers for many of these right now. Uh, I would say one question we've been looking at is will Texas use Drew Kibler on the 200 free relay or or not? Uh, Chances are he'll be swimming in the A final of the 500 free, and it doesn't look like they're putting any additional gaps in. So if it's only, you know, 10 or 15 minutes between the 200 free relay and the 500 free, will Texas use him or not? Uh, I think, think if they do, that gives them the edge. If not, uh, Leaning towards Cal on this one, I know Florida's seated more highly, but uh, I think Cal still has a little more left of the tank for sure from Pac-12s. I could definitely see them taking this. Yeah, I, I'm i leaning towards Cal. Um, I, I think for me, like like the Virginia women, I think the Cal men are just going to go a lot faster than they went at Pac-12s. I think it's hard, it's hard with this relay um, because – the 50 free field is so young this year and it's hard to tell where they're going to, the freshmen are going to be, but I just feel like with, with Hoffer and Seeliger, it's, it's hard. I, I can't, I can't, um, I can't not say Cal. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you guys. Uh, I, I would bet that Texas uses Kibler um, just because he, it, he, he's not as necessary on their medleys, but that is an interesting point that the 500 free is going to be coming up right after it. But um, I think this is kind of Cal's bread and butter as the eight free relay is Texas's just in the past. And certainly this year, they've got a strong sprinting core. It's not totally reliable on those younger guys. Um, you know, they've got Hoffer and obviously Seeliger is a freshman, but I, I, I see Cal winning this one too. Um, 500 free. I thought this was going to be a runaway race, you know, Kieran Smith all the way, but we've got another guy in 406 range. We've got Kibler in 408 and uh, Trenton Julian and the fourth guy under 410 from Cal. What are you guys thinking? Robert, let's start with you. I still think this is Smith's race to lose. He was the first one to hit 406. In fact, he tied it to the right hundredth of a second. He tied it to last month, last month. Right. So that's amazing. Uh, there's no reason he should not be able to go faster at NCAAs. Uh, McGahey, that was kind of not out of nowhere. He's been a great middle distance guy for distance guy for a long time, but still for him to pop 406, that was amazing. And let's not forget Kibler went 408 back in October, right? As things were really just ramping up. So it would not surprise me at all for him to drop in there and push those guys in the 405, 406 range. Uh, but I still got to get the edge to Smith. Yeah, I think it's Smith. It's, it's interesting because, with thinking back to last year with Smith and Fink having those ridiculous swims at SEC's and then we, we had never got a chance to see what they would do at, at NCAAs. And now we get to see that. Um, and they both are kind of like right where they were in both of those races that they, they really went crazy in. Um, I think, I think Smith gets it. I think that Kibler is going to, I think Kibler will, will 
get second here. I think he's going to drop more. I don't. I don't want to see McGee go slower. I think. I think just. I just think Killer will be a lot faster. Yeah, I. I think much like uh, <clears throat> Maggie McNeil versus Kate Douglas in the women's meet, I think we're going to have three Duke Duke it out races between Kieran Smith and Drew Kibler here. Um, I, I. I don't. I don't think Kieran is going to go faster. I and I and I. I'm going to say, I think Kibler kind of edges him out and beats him because uh, like you said, last year, we didn't get to see, we don't have that data of if Karen, you know, w- went faster at NCAAs, but um, I think Kibler's due for like a, a big, big meet. And I, th- I think this might be it for him, but <clears throat> yeah, that's, I feel like that's going to be a really good race and, and a really good way to start the weekend for, for those two uh, <laughs> men's 200. I am. Shane Kossow's top seed by over two seconds. I think the bigger question for his three events is not will he win, but will he break the NCAA records? And let's start with the 200 IM. He's been 138.9. Um, Carl, is he going to is he going to push the 138 boundary? I think so. I think I I just think I I think his his 200 back his 136 in the two back after he was walking around with the boot on deck <laughs> says enough about where he's been at this season. I just think I would be really surprised if he didn't just go like a 137 low, honestly, which is, it's, just, it's so weird to me. Just, it seems like in all these barriers and, and several different events, like the fifties on the fly in the back and the women's side, the 140 barrier on the men's side and the two I am like, these barriers are just so not interesting anymore. It's like, okay. And who's next going to be under, under 140, you know? Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's crazy to me that, we're, we, we might be bored by like a 138 mid. You know, you bring up a good point or something you mentioned that made me think. We've seen so many fast times all season long uh, from Texas guys, from Texas A&M, from Cal, you know, at random meets it felt like. I'm curious to see just how much people drop really over the next week or two. If there's different training approaches this year, it means there's less room to taper. And I'm not sure the time's going to be quite as crazy as you might think they may be. They may be. I may be wrong. So I'm going to say Cassis wins for sure, but I think he finds, finds himself just shy of Dressel's record. I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you on that one, Robert. I think that it's just, <laughs> it's a really fast record. And uh, I think uh, preview for later, I think Casas gets it in the other two, to be honest. But, um, but in the two I am, I think he's still kind of warming up. And I think this one, he, he goes 138 low, but, yeah, j- just shy of, of the NCAA and of Dressel's record. Uh, men's 50 free. Um, we've got uh, set the, in the top seven seeds in the men's 50 free, six of them are lower are underclassmen. Uh, we've got four freshmen in at, uh, at 18 plus in the 50 free. I mean, it's kind of a crazy field. Uh, Robert, what are you seeing for this one? Like you said, crazy young field, so anything can happen, but I got to give the edge to Hoffer on this. He's the returning champion from 2019. He's been 18-5 before, which is a bit faster than anyone else in the field. So with the experience there, I think this is his event to lose. I'm going to go with Cheney on this one. I think it's, to me, reminiscent of how Hoffer kind of came up in the, the wake of Caleb Dressel as like that sort of like really, really fast, pure sprinter in high school that – you know, obviously kept growing and getting faster. Um, and Ch- Chaney really popped. Like, it wasn't until SECs that he popped. And I think he he's someone who's had those really crazy relay splits. And he's had um, – he's been to World – I think he's been to World Juniors. And it finally, I think that was – just, like, watching him on the live stream, like, that that's, says a lot more than when you're just looking at results. He just looked so powerful. Um, and so I think, I think he's going to take this one. Ooh, wow. I got to side with Robert again on this. One. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I think Hoffer has the experience. He's the defending champion. And uh, I think he's, he's going to want to go out with a bang, um, you know, fully bearded at pac 12s. Um, and so I, I think he's going to be ready to, to roll. And so I'm going to go with him and, on the experience, but yeah, that, that should be a pretty, pretty wild event. Um, men's 400 medley relay. We've got, Texas, Indiana, Cal, Florida, and Louisville all at 302. Um, and then, oh, uh, sorry, Michigan at 3031. 
So fairly tightly bunched field. And I, again, this is my favorite relay because there's so many variables involved. Um, Carl, what do you see for this one? This one, I think, I don't think Cal is going to do the, get the two medley. I think this is where, I think their stroke specialists are just a lot better in the hundred um, than in the 50, especially like Whitley. I think Whitley is not at the same level as some of the, all these like 22 splits we're seeing um, on the two medley. Um, and I think having, you know, Hoffer and Teeler on the back end is just like, it's hard to beat. And I, I don't see, I don't see a front end with like, it, I mean, they could go with Daniel Carr. They could go with Bryce Mefford. They could go with Dustin Lasko on the front end, and then Whitley. I, I don't. I just. I don't see. I don't see them in in a hole at halfway, and I don't see Hoffer and Sealer somehow losing. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I think I'm gonna give Texas the edge actually in this one here. Uh, their back half, their front half, if they're clicking, can be just as good as uh, Cal's front half. I think there's no guarantee they will. Uh, but then I think I'd actually give the edge to Jiang and uh, Kruger on the fly in the, in the uh, 100. Ooh, fly in the fray over Hoffer and Seeliger right now. So I think it could be really close. I could see both teams threatening 3 double for sure, maybe 259. Uh, but I think Texas has a slight edge on this one. Yeah, I, I, I will also go with um, Texas because – but but both teams are hard to call because I feel like we really haven't seen what either team has to offer. You know, mid season it seems like they were both fairly conservative. Um, if they even had mid seasons and conference, same thing. And so I think that that's going to be a battle, and obviously, um, it's on a bigger scale, kind of representative of the team battle that'll be going on. But so that's that's our day two. Day three, we open up with the men's four hundred IM. Freshman Carson Foster, 335-2, over two seconds ahead of Hugo Gonzalez, who we will finally see at another NCAAs after, I think, uh, three years, or it's this will be year three, yeah. where um, he hasn't, you know, he's been out of commission for a while, but uh, those are the top two seeds by far. Um, Robert, what do, you, what do you see for this one? So I, I got to go with Foster on this one. Uh, he's been a great IMer for a long time. Definitely not missing any beats down at Texas, put up the second fastest time ever, the second fastest you know, performer ever, right at the beginning of his freshman year. I, I think he'll go faster at NCAAs. And uh, be curious to see what Gonzalez does, if he can actually kind of click at this NCAA, NCAAs. And if he does, he could definitely push Foster. Uh, but I think it's Foster's race to lose. Yeah, I agree. I think um, it reminds me of like – watching Alex Walsh and getting excited about her IMs just because they're both, they're both such blue chip IM recruits and now they're, you know, doing it um, in, in college. And yeah, I think since just with Foster going that time in October, I, I don't see, I, I think he's going to be faster. I think he's going to be, you know, pushing that, that record. And um, I'm also interested to see what his older brother Jacob does. Um, Jake Foster up and he's in the fifth seat at 340-35. Um, and I wonder if he can try to make a podium too. top three finish. <clears throat> My prediction is simple. If Carson and Jake are swimming side by side, I think Carson wins. <laughs> if, uh, if they're separated by a lane, say if Hugo's in the middle of them, I think Hugo can take both <laughs> of them down. So uh, we'll see. That's, that's my caveat prediction. Uh, next is the men's hundred fly where we have a whopping seven guys who have already been under 45 uh, headed by Yusuf Ramadan, a Virginia Tech freshman at 44-3. I did not see that coming at ACC's. Um, Carl, give me your take on the honor fly. Yeah, I think that was that was one of the biggest surprises. I think well, him and Tomer Frankel of Indiana going the times they did, they both won um, their respective conference meet as freshmen, as international freshmen. I think Ramadan especially is exciting, just seeing, seeing the team under Sergio really, really growing and getting – to this point where they're, you know, a top ACC team now. They don't, it's not just they have a couple of couple strong guys. They have like a full team now. Um, he's, I mean, he's a full three times. He's already, he's a 44 low. It's, that's really fast. I think this is the race that Ryan Hoffer drops the hammer. <laughs> um, again, just seeing the beard <laughs> at pack 12s. I, I think, um, I think he's been 44 mid, um, but I, I think this is his this is his race with underwaters. Maybe that's a crazy call, but I 
I yeah. think so. Robert? <laughs> I've been going back and forth even right now on this one. Uh, I said, that seems like a decent margin for Ramadan right there. Almost three, ten- over three tenths of a second. Yeah. And uh, one of the top performers of all time. But again, we just don't really know what Virginia Tech's going to look like, you know, a month after going really so big at ACC's. Uh, so I really want to give the edge to Ramadan, but I'm curious to see what guys like Nick Albiero will do. He's seated second. Yeah, I think he's still looking for his first NCAA win. Uh, Alvin Jang with Texas hasn't swam NCAAs as a Longhorn yet. Threw down some crazy fast uh, fly spits, splits already. I really want to see what he does. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say Ramadan for right now, but uh, it's gonna be a heck of a race. Yeah, I'm gonna. Um... I, I'm not going to choose a winner. I can't, <laughs> but, but I am going to say it's going to be a senior. I think between Albiero, Camden Murphy, the, the third seed, who's been exceedingly consistent for Georgia, uh, Alvin Jiang from Texas, and then Hoffer from Cal. I think one of those four guys is going to, is going to take it. You know, I think they all want that individual title for their senior season. And uh, they, they want to, they want to cap off their NCAA career, even though some of them might be back next year, but um, I think a senior takes it, but. My crystal ball doesn't say who. Uh, next up is men's. It's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's convenient. Uh, 200, men's 200 free round two of Kieran Smith and Drew Kibler, who were the top two seeds. Smith already been 129.4 at SEC's Kibler 130.5. And then Paul Delakis um, is third seed at 131.9, which is crazy that you have 12 guys. Or sorry. No, no, no. 15 guys who've been 132 this season. Um, just so crazy. Uh, what, Carl, what, what are you thinking for this one? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all all aboard the Kieran train. I feel like I don't want to be that person, but I I just remember watching his, his stroke in high school and I was like, his, his stroke is just so smooth. And so to be, to, be that, to be that fast in the sprint events with a stroke like that is just mind boggling. And I think it's like about time he's, he's this fast in the 200. Um, he's such a smart racer and he, I remember like just watching him, like I, I really thought McGee, he was going to pass him in that 500 and he just, he held strong. And I, I don't think, I don't think anyone's going to beat him in this. Um, I'm also just interested. There's um, McGee, he's here too. It's also Luke Miller, a freshman of NC state, Bachelor Unlu, a freshman, Turkish freshman from Georgia tech is down there in uh, nine. Yeah. And then Brooks Curry at 11. I think Brooks Curry has a lot more to go. Um, I feel like he, the LSU's coaching staff knew what they, they realized what they had at SEC. He's, he's really insanely fast. And I think, I don't think he was all the way down, all the way down this year at SEC. So I think he's going to push for like a top three, top three finish. But Kieran, yeah. <laughs> Robert. I would love to see Drew Kibler pop something big here, like 129 also. And, I, you know, if something was to go wrong, he could definitely win. But I think you got to give Smith the edge. So I am curious to see what Drew Kibler does. Uh, I think he could be a lot faster than he's been so far. I think it's a big swim in him, like you were saying. I, I think it's more likely to come here than in the 500. I just think he's more of a natural 200 guy. Uh, but Smith has a one-second lead already. So I don't think he can quite – I don't think Kibler can quite make it up. But I'd love to be sh- proved wrong. Yeah, I I'm I am gonna go with Kieran on this one as well. Uh, I think he's he's already there, and uh, like you said, a one second lead. But I think Kibler, I think they can both go under one thirty in that final heat and uh, make it quite quite a good race. Do we think um, we're, do we think that anyone's capable of a one twenty eight? Because now we're suddenly having that conversation. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, you know, Kieran, after talking to Kieran, um, at, right after his 500 SECs, you know, he said I'm shaved and tapered. And while I don't think that means he's going to swim slower necessarily in CAAs, I, I don't think he's going to drop another half second in the 200, um, especially because that 129 came from the relay lead off. Right. Of totally. Yeah. Um, all right, men's hunter breast to this event is, is crazy deep. We've got 23 guys under 52 seconds. I think there's 11 A cuts. Uh, 13. 13. 13 <laughs> A cuts. Um, this, That's nuts. The depth of this field is insane. Uh, Max McHugh, huge lead with, with 50.1. And then Will Chan of Michigan, 50.9. And then a bunch of 51s. Uh, can, can anyone catch Max McHugh? 
I think that Reese Whitley will be close. I just, again, I don't think he has that going out speed. I think he's, I think he's going to close like crazy and it's going to look like he might pass him. And then he doesn't, I think it's going to be one of those finishes. Um, but yeah, McHugh is, I think he's going to get under 50 here. Robert. I agree. McHugh, uh, Whitley right there. Other name, a little bit further down the psych sheet is uh, Texas's Casper Kerbo. Uh, I think he actually has the fastest long course time in NCAAs right now. I think he's the only one under 1-0-0. He's actually been 59 mid, I want to say. Uh, so I think he could push those two uh, quite possibly, but I think it's McHugh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement. I think McHugh goes under 50. He's ha- had a sensational season. He's split crazy fast in season times. Um, and I think, yeah, he, he gets under that 50 barrier for the second man all time. Uh, 100 backstroke. Again, Shane Casas, nearly a full second, first seed, 43-8. Um, I, I think the question is not if he wins, but if he breaks Murphy's record. Robert? Um, does he break Murphy's record? I say, man, I've gone back and forth on this one. I say no this year. I think he'll get it. Maybe on the med, maybe, maybe even the medley really lead off, but I'm not sure I see it in this race. Right what now. is that record again? Wait, yeah, I was trying to think, what is it exactly? 3349. I'm going to say no. Very close, but no. I think so. <laughs> I think, I mean, I think it's possible. I don't, I don't know if it will happen, but I think it's possible. Um, I think the race for second will be really interesting just with, with five guys um, at 49 high and then a bunch down like 45 low um, or 44 high and 45 low. Um, I, th- I think, I think like the Cal guys are seated kind of low, like Carr and Mefford at 40, they're like 14th and 15th. I think they're going to be in the A final, both of them in Lasco probably too. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens with them. Yeah. Like you said, I think this is a pivotal race for the, for the team title in terms of Cal and Texas, because we've got Alvin GA and Chris Staka at seven and eight. And then, like you said, Lasko's 11th and then Carm Mefford 14, 15. And so this will be, th- this prelim session might be just as exciting as the final session, uh, in terms of overall team scores, but, um, I, I see Casas dipping under Murphy's record and, and etching his name uh, in the all-time record boards. I think I think he'll get this one, especially after just after the season he's had. He's he's been dropping heat all year. Uh, Tuner Medley relay, Michigan first seed, Louisville second seed, uh, and then Cal in there for third. Uh, the only three schools under one twenty-three. Um, Carl, what are you thinking for this one? Yeah, this one's this one's really hard. <laughs> I, mean, like, I feel like I'm saying that on every single one. Um, Michigan, Louisville, and Cal are all—they all had those 50 guys. They have at least like one guy who's like maybe better in the 50 at the at their stroke. Um, I, I I think that um, I I like Michigan here. They're already they're already four tenths or three tenths ahead, and I think that. I think that Chan's breaststroke split, his 22-6 at Big Tens, just gives them that that edge. And it's I see, you know, I see Wright and whether it's lower Albiero on fly going 19s, Wright for Michigan going 19, Hoffer for California going 19 on fly. And then I, I think Cal's needs Cal needs to be close to like have some half sealer or anchor them back into it. Um I honestly think it'll be this, the one, two, three, as it is on, this, on, on the on the seeds. I think it'll be Michigan, Louisville, Cal. Robert? I was going to say Cal. They've actually been pretty good at the two, really, really the last couple of NCAAs. And guys like Carr are back still and, they, and Hoffer as well. Um, but again, it, you know, can Whitley go 22? That would be fun to see. And if he does, I think they take this. Yeah. Uh, frankly. It's- I was looking at Lewis looking at 2019s and he was only a 23 six. Right. And so I think he'll, I think he for sure has a faster split than that in him. But if he's only like 23, three, that's not enough. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I, I'll say Cal if we can split 22, nine or better. Otherwise I, I think Carl's talked me into Michigan on this one. Uh, I think Texas is a little more room to move up there. 
uh, Alabama, you never know if they're going to pop something crazy, but uh, <laughs> even across coaching changes, right. They, they've had some fun with this relay over the years, but uh, I'll give Michigan the edge on this one. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the Cal's front half kind of worries me on this one just because those guys are more 100, 200 guys, um, whoever does end up leading off if it's Carr or I don't, maybe Lasco or someone else. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if they can get that front half down, I think Cal's back half would be hard to beat. But I think overall, um, yeah, Michigan is looking pretty good. Uh, it's 1650. Can Bobby Fink go 14-12 again? <laughs> that was so that was so weird to watch because I was paying attention to the splits early and, I, and then he started falling off the splits. So I stopped kind of checking based on his 2020 splits. And then Rowdy and Beisel, I don't think they could think they, they they were they could tell either that he was actually getting back closer to that time again. And then suddenly it was like they, they realized they realized in the last like 75, they're like, wait, he's actually right on right on his own, his own pace and he ended up going out a huge time um yeah i mean it's it's all think <laughs> but i i'm curious to see what he can go um at this point it's like he's so far ahead i'm like i don't i don't i can't tell if he could drop five seconds or if he could drop one tenth i don't know robert yeah i agree it's think all the way and uh i think he breaks it again i think he'll do it here so I don't have any great, really great, you know, evidence for that. And then I think he's due. 13. So. Let's see a 13. <laughs> I don't know about that. I 14, 10, 14, 11 for sure. So yeah. I I'm, I'm going to go against the grain here. I, I think Zach Eden is hungry and I mm. think he wants it. And uh, I, so in his front Bobby's freshman season, when he went really fast at SECs, you know, he didn't, he didn't repeat that performance at NCAAs and uh you know I just it's I think it's hard to go that fast twice especially in a mile and I'm I have no doubt that he can but I just I see him not being able to quite match that performance and I see uh Zach Eden throwing down a big time from Cal again a senior um who knows if he'll swim again next year but um I think I think he's gonna have a big drop and I, I see an upset but we'll see uh men's tuner backstroke Casas 136.5 Destin Lasco of Cal number two seed 138.1 I feel like that's pretty st- stock but um the record R- Murphy's record 135.7 so uh Casas is 0.8 away Robert does he break it uh <laughs> I say no on this one. I actually, I'm going to change my answer. He, he's going to get the hundred back record. I say no on the 200 back actually. Uh, <laughs> end, end of a long meet. Uh, lots of relays for Casas. Casas so uh, not quite sure there. And, and I really want to see uh, what Austin Katz can do. He's actually been faster than Casas has going back to his uh, times from t- 2018, 2019. Been a little bit slower this year. It's only been 140, but should have a relatively lighter load. This year, not doing the 500 free. We'll see if he ends, ends up on any relays. He may be in the 800 free, maybe the 400 medley, uh, but just the 100 back in this individually. Uh, so I'd like to see a good battle between the two of them. And uh, I think Cass probably has the edge, but it would not surprise me at all to see Katz uh, kind of rev it up for his last senior swim and, and get the win to go back to, uh, to take back the crown from his freshman year. I, I think this is the one that Cass does get the record. Um, and I, I I, I, do, I definitely agree that Cass is going to be a lot faster. I think he I – w- I would expect like a 136 from him, but I, I can't tell if it's because he's just kind of cruising by to like pop off at NCs or if it's just like he doesn't have it this year. I can't tell, honestly. Um, so I, I honestly – I see um, I see Lasko dropping more. I see Lasko joining them under 137. I think he, he is such a back half swimmer. It's – worrying sometimes seeing him and like a hundred back go out at the pace he goes out and then he can somehow close um yeah the, i mean the, the, the cal two backstroke group is is ridiculous having to put gonzalez into the two breasts because they already have five guys seated in the top 12 um so yeah yeah i i, I think casas can get the record in this one again i 
I think there's less of a chance of it than the hundred though. It it is a log meet. Casas is going to be a big really relay piece for AM. Um I would love to see Austin Katz get up there and make it a good race. And uh again, a big, a big event for the team battle. <clears throat> it's it's gonna be an exciting last day for sure. Moving on to the hundred freestyle, we got Daniel Kruger of Texas, 41-3. Ryan Hoffer at 41.5, and then a, a bunch of underclassmen again, Kibler and, and Kieran Smith, round three, but only at number seeds six and seven. Uh, what are you guys seeing for this race? Ooh. <laughs> um, I like Hoffer here. I, it's, I think it's either Hoffer or Kruger. I think they have the experience. It, it is exciting, though, to see the freshman, uh, the freshman Matts, King and Brown said already – converting that they, they already have like their, their speed, their pure speed in the fifties already clearly there, but they also are 41s in the hundred, which I think is impressive that they were able to build that speed, you know, through the hundred, not just the 50. Um, and then there's Kibler too, and Kieran and Brooks Curry and Adam Chaney. And it's, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I don't, I'll just say Hoffer and then shut up. Uh, I'm going to give Kruger, uh, the edge. I keep saying the edge. I think I've used that phrase in every one. Uh, it's annoying me. But uh, I think Kruger wins this. Uh, would be great to see Hoffer finally match his high school time. I don't think he has yet. I think it was a 41-23. Yep. That'd be awesome to see, of course, finally. Uh, but Kruger's been consistent consistent in this event since he's a freshman back at NCAAs in 2019, where he took fourth ahead uh, of Hoffer, head, head of all sorts of other folks who expected to, to finish ahead of him then. He has a top time this season. And really, no reason to be uh, fully tapered at any point in there. So I, I think this is Kruger, Kruger's race. So the Hoffers should push him. Uh, Robert, I agree that, that Kruger has been super consistent in this race. I think the hundred free is his bread and butter distance. He can like kind of go up to the two hundred. He can go down to the fifty. But um, I think the safe money is there. But I, I'm going to go with Hoffer as well. I think that time final relays is going to benefit him mm. uh, not having to swim those prelims. And he's going to have, he's going to be a little more fresh. I think he's going to take the 50 and the hundred free at this meet and, and he will match his time from high school. Um, I see that happening for him this season. So that's, that's my take. Well, but that that's going to be a great race um, no matter who takes the win men's turn of breast Reese Whitley top seed by well over two seconds at 148.5. Max McHugh is second seed at 150.9. Then you have a few 151s down there. Um, can anyone catch Willie? Robert, we'll start with you. I'm honestly getting a little bored picking the top seed in every event, but uh, I don't really see that changing here. So, uh, no, I'm going to go with Whitley. That 148 back in – it was October or November, right, at kind of a random dual meet where they suited up. Mm -hmm. That's got to be scaring everyone else. <laughs> uh, so he, he could have a very good shot at going 147 and breaking uh Lacone's record here i'd say it's at least 50 50 if not better right so i'd be kind of i'd be almost a little surprised if he doesn't uh yeah. and McHugh's up there as well for sure but i think this is whitley's race yeah i totally agree on, on whitley i think the record's on watch here i also though think that daniel roy is going to get second. I think he's also going to break 150. He went a 209 at one of those November Cal Stanford meets in long course. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. um, which had him like at the time ranked in the world, in the top, I think top 10 in the world because it was early in the season. Um, but to have that kind of speed in a 200 event and in long course in October or November, um, that was impressive to me. I think he, I think he'll catch McKee on the, on the back half. But it's all Whitley. Yeah, I think it's a safe bet. I think Daniel Roy's got more to room to improve there, but I think Whitley's <laughs> gonna take it. He's he's had a great season, and um, again, another one of those who hasn't really had to show his cards too much. Um, and then last individual event of the meet, men's tuner fly, Trenton Julian top seed at one thirty eight five, and then we've got Albiero one thirty nine zero. Quite a few one thirty nines. Carl, what are you thinking for this one? Man, <laughs> um, definitely a deep, really deep field up top. Um, I like Albiero here. Uh, I think it'll be him or Julian, but I also, I, I don't know. I, I'm very, I'm very stumped by Luca Orlando because I just feel 
it, it's he, in long course. He's the, clearly the best of the of all of these swimmers. He's at a 153 in long course. Um, he's he's obviously looked looked very good even despite his um his injury from last year. Um, but I I don't know. I want I think I think he'll be under 140, but I think I think it's up to. Uh, no, I, know. I keep looking every time I look at that seat, the, the, the seeds, I just I'm like, oh, what about this person? Like Brendan Burns just had a huge big hands. Um, yeah. And Pomayevic, I don't know. Uh, I I think I think I'll stick with Albiero, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to give Albiero the edge on this one as well. I, I just, again, uh, been pretty consistent this event for a long time. Julian has too, for sure. I think it'll be a great race between the two with Sam probably, and Brendan not too far behind him, for sure. Uh, but for a reason, I just think this is all Bieros, uh time to get his win. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it'll be great to see those three seniors at the top, Pameovich, Albiero, and Julian, hopefully all in the A final and kind of duking it out. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what Alvin Jiang does <laughs> at number 11. Hmm. He went a 141.6 at big 12s. I did not expect to see him swimming this event individually. I thought it was kind of like, oh, let's do this for fun at conference meet. But he is in it, and it, it I will be interested to, you know, every time I've talked to someone, they're like, oh, yeah, he's a drop-dead sprinter. So I think it'll be really interesting to see if he can, you know, pop in a, a, a final appearance or something like that. But um, I, I'm going to give the edge to Trent and Julian. He's, he's, a, he's a racer, and I think he wants that individual title. Um, and then our last event, the men's foreigner free relay NC state kind of surprisingly is the top seed. And then, but we've got f- six teams at two forty eight. Um, Robert, what do, what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> Keep going back and forth on this one a little bit, uh, or a lot for sure. Uh, just looking at NC state's times from, you know, ACC. So you got Luke Miller leading off in 42.5. You got Hunter Tapp and Stokowski both at 41s. Izzo was almost there. You know, I'm curious to see how much faster NC State gets this year. Uh, a couple years ago, they're really good at kind of getting faster from ACCs to, or yeah, ACCs to NCAAs. Curious to see kind of taper and rest this year, how that looks for them for sure. Uh, Louisville's a threat as well. I'm not sure again how much more speed they've got there. Um, I want to say Texas, honestly, this one. I'm not really sure why. I think you put Kibler back here. Uh, you know, uh, Kibler and Kruger would be a really nice one-two punch for Texas, and they got enough other guys who can go sub-42. I think they can take this. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think it could be Texas's, but I think I, this 400 free relay is always just like a tough – it's a tough relay, and I think that if – I think it, I think it will depend really on the, the team the team race at that point. I think that's the kind of event where I could see a bunch of teams winning. But I think whoever I think if like Cal or Texas is safely in the lead by that point, I I, I would see the the team that's not winning just kind of you know falter a bit. Um, it's end of the end of a long meet, but it can also be like it, it'd be really fun if it came down to the four hundred free relay. <laughs> um, I, I yeah, I'll go with Texas too. I would, I would love to see the team battle come down to the foreigner free relay. I don't think we've had an NCAAs like that in quite a long time. Um, we, we're down to a minute, 30 <laughs> seconds. Um, well, Carl, we'll start with you. Texas or Cal, who do you see winning the title? I, I go Cal. I feel like I usually go Cal, but yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Robert? I've seen Cal for a while, but looking at it again, I think Texas diving puts him over the edge by maybe 10 or 20 points even, so there's not much margin for error there at all. But diving. Diving. That's always, diving. The, it's always <laughs> the X factor. Um, I'm going to go with Cal, but, uh, you know, we'll see. It's going to be an exciting meet either way, and uh, stay tuned because Swim Swam will have full coverage. You've been listening to the Swim Swam Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.